Hello YouTube and welcome to another episode of the Cloudy Vape. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I hand wrap clapped in coils. Now again like I said with the twisted, the hand twisted build, uh, you know you can do it however you want. You can use a uh, power drill, uh, you know you can wrap it like that, but this is just how I do it by hand. Uh, a couple of videos, or sorry, a couple of the uh, images I posted on Instagram. These are the builds I did by hand. Uh, you know, it kind of, you know, it, it is what it is. If you want to do it this way, do it this way. If you want to do it the other way, cool. If you can't get your hands on a power drill and you really want to try it, this is one way to do it. So, uh, yeah, it's a little uh, little mundane. It's a little monotonous, I guess. Uh, it's very uh, tedious. I don't I don't know what else to say. But yeah, you have to do it. This is how you do it if you don't have a power drill. So without more yapping, let's dive down and check it out. Alrighty, let's get started with this. All you're gonna need is uh, some pliers, pair of pliers. You also need a screwdriver, uh, and then of course some canthal. Uh, personally, it's easiest to use a thicker gauge of canthal. Uh, this is some 22 gauge. You can use some 24 gauge, even 26 gauge as the inner part of the Clapton. Uh, so that is just one thought if you want to do that. Uh, I know if you go anything lower, uh, you can't really get the canthal stiff enough to wrap on. So just keep that in mind. Definitely keep that in mind. Uh, right now, I'm just going to do a single coil for you guys just so you can figure out how to do it. And you can see how to do it. So uh, yes, very much on that. And uh, so we're going to use some 22 gauge for the, uh, the center. And then we're going to wrap it with some 32 gauge. So let me uh, just set this 32 gauge aside. Let's straighten out this uh, 22 gauge. It's it, just think of it just like you would do with a uh, you know with a power drill. Same thing like the, the twisted wire. Let's cl cramp it down right here. Just hold it down like this. Wrap it around once. Wrap it around and then go right through. Go right through the head of the uh, of the wrench or the pliers rather. Just go right in between the head of the pliers just like that so that's through all right so let me go up close just so you guys can see what's going on so that's wrapped around and then it's going right through the center of those pliers just so you got a good grip so with that being held uh, you should have actually done it backwards I know this is kind of weird now so I'm gonna have to hold on to this but no problem so actually <laughs> I'm just kind of winging it but uh, so this side you just just grab your screwdriver and there's usually a little groove on most screwdrivers just find that groove find that that sweet spot and uh, just wrap around into that groove just like that and then uh, twist it off just so you have a good loop on that so uh, this side this is what you got you just got a loop going on around the uh, the screwdriver right around there holding on to it and on your other side this is what you got. You got it wrapped around this. And so what you're gonna do, kind of like the twisted, uh, the hand twisted wire, you just kind of spin it out. Just keep twisting it uh, and you'll get that canthal nice and straight. That's a good way to get it straight if you want to straighten out your canthal before you wrap it. This is also really good for uh, parallel builds. If you don't have a power drill, this is a good way to straighten out your canthal before you do a parallel build. So definitely think about that. Uh, these builds by hand, they're really for people who don't have access to say a, a power drill uh, or just want to, you know, tinker with it and are just really into it that much that they want to spend this much time onto it. So uh, what I will do is uh, I'm going to speed up my my twisting of this and I'll actually put in uh, annotations how long it took me uh, to spin these. But I'll go ahead and speed it up and at the end you'll see how long it took me. So just so you know, just keep continuing spinning this out until the canthal is nice and straight. So just remember, hold on to this tight, hold on to this side nice and tight, pull it nice and tight, and then just keep twisting. Alrighty, when you're all done, uh, you should be able to just relax on it. This will twist out just a little bit. But now you see the canthal is nice and straight. If you see, I'm actually just pop this off like that. Your canthal is nice and straight now, across, all the way across. Sorry if my uh, screwdriver is hitting the table and making noise, but there you go. So your canthal is nice and straight. No issues here, canthal is nice and straight. So uh, let's go ahead and clip off the, the little uh, J 
jaggedy parts that we made. Clip these off. Now that we've straightened this canthal nice and straight, make sure it's uh, you know kind of twangy. You should be able to twang it a little bit. That's so you know it's straight. So just so you know, twang it. Twang it and that's how it's straight. So have a look at this, strained out, nice and smooth. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make this Clapton. Let's do it real quickly. I'm trying to make this video not too long because yes, it is gonna take some time, but uh, let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so first thing you need to do, just find one end of this canthal. Now take it and make a little uh, make a little loop, just a little loop like this, enough to basically fit one of your fingers in like this. So I'll make it a little bit bigger because I have fat fingers. So if you have fat fingers, make sure you you have a large piece of canthal. That way you can make a nice loop to fit your finger through. So basically make a ring, uh, twist this around nice and tight like that. So you got a loop right at the end of this. That's pretty much what you want to do. All right, so now that we made this little loop, let's look at it a little bit closer just so you can see. Just make a little loop like this. You basically need enough to get your finger into. That's all you need. Uh, just make that little loop just so you can spin around like that and I will show you why you need that in just a little bit but definitely make a loop on one end and then uh, that is that that's all you got to do nothing nothing fancy here just make that loop so step one straighten your canthal step two make this loop and step three get your uh, get your outer wrapping wire whatever you're gonna use I would suggest using like a 30 32 34 uh, any small gauge you can. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this off. So here is the 32 gauge. I'm just going to take, um, I would say about five or six feet of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it loosely, uh, loosely fall to the ground. So I'm just going to pull out a bunch. And just kind of pull it out, pull it out, uh, kind of be firm with it. So hold on to it and just kind of keep pulling it firm. And that'll just straighten it out just a little bit. You don't want it completely straight. Uh, you kind of want it to just do its own thing. Uh, it's not like some of the Clapton coil or Clapton builds you've seen where you need to straighten out your, your outer wire. So I'm just gonna pull out a bunch. Just pull out a bunch, keep pulling out. Like I said, about five feet. All right, so I got about five feet of that. I just clipped it off. The rest of the wire is kind of just hanging freely on the ground. I'm not disturbing it. I'm just letting it do its own thing. So what you need to do now is if you look right up here, just take this wire, wrap it around all the other uh, kind of twists up here just so you get a firm grip on it. Just grip it up right there. That way it's not going to move when you start twisting. So uh, let me let me just tighten it up a little bit. I'm sorry about the focus. I'm trying to get really close so the focus is kind of freaking out on you. Uh, let's go ahead and look at it now. So basically this is all I did. If you see it's all twisted up in there all around that 22. That's just so it's holding on tight. And then you'll see once we start wrapping it, what it'll look like. So now just make sure you have a, just go ahead and twist this a little bit. It's kind of like your, uh, you know, wind up monkey basically right here. Wind up the monkey. Just twist this a little bit, just so it's down a little bit more, just like that. And then once you get it past uh, all of this 22 gauge twisted this where this tw 22 gauge is twisted up Your fingers can freely twist just get a firm grip on it pinch right here And all you got to do is just start twisting And again, I will uh, I'll speed up the video for you so you can see how long this took uh, And then I'll I'll notate it in the bottom below and you'll see how long it took but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep twisting this just like this. And when I get uh, when I get about halfway done, I'll go ahead and show you it, see what it might look like. Because there's a few more steps after this. And this is how we, uh, we make the Clapton by hand. Or at least how I make it by hand. There might be other methods, but this is what I do. Alright, so I'm going to speed up this video. And uh, go ahead and have a vape while you watch my finger twirl around really fast. Just so you know, I have my finger through this hoop right here that we made, and I'm just spinning around my finger just like this. And all I'm doing is holding this wire, and the wire's right here. It's like, a, it's like a magic trick. This wire's right here, and I'm just feeding this wire onto 
onto the 22 gauge. That's all I'm doing. I'm spinning it and it's feeding through my fingers up right here and the rest is on the floor. It's just sitting right there. All right, back to uh, fast motion. So have a vape and enjoy my finger spin. All right, we're gonna pause really quickly. Let's look real quick if you can see. Basically, this is what it looks like. It's not super uh, tight together, if you can see that. It's not super tight together, but uh, we'll, get it, we'll get it tight together when we're done. So just keep wrapping it like that. And there should be slight, slight gaps in between each wrap around it. So don't worry about it. There will be slight gaps, but we'll get it out at the end. So just keep twisting it and uh, I'll see you at the end. All right, so I'm all done with this. I basically twisted it all around and now the, uh, the shameful part about this is it's probably only going to use about half of this, uh, half of this canthal. Uh, we're going to crunch it down because it is a little loosely wrapped. Uh, if you look closely. Okay, so there it is. There is the good stuff. All right, so now what we do, since this is all wrapped around, uh, go ahead and take your uh, 32 gauge. If you have extra 32 gauge, just pull it aside. It's all twisted up. On this side, where you're, uh, where you ended your wrap, just go ahead and get, you know, however much you need, and just clip off that 32 gauge off. If you do it to where you just run out of, you just keep wrapping until you run out, no problem. But if you have too much, just, uh, you know, pull that apart. So it's it's really cool to see this kind of crunch up. If you can see right here. Uh, you know, it's a little spaced out and that's no problem. You can uh, you can get those spaces out All you got to do is you just kind of push them together Kind of like you do with the, when you're doing it with a power drill You just kind of push them together and adjust them to where they need to be So uh, I just kind of go along all of it find any uh, find any uh, gaps major gaps and kind of just crunch them together so I'm just basically pushing together the wire and it's sliding on top of the 22 gauge. So just keep doing that. And then also you can grab this and just pull it because what we did over here is we created a, we created a kind of stop on this so we can just push it down. This right here, we can just keep pushing this down, push it down. And then what you want to do is once you get to where you need to be, which I'm not there yet. Just kind of keep crunching. It's good to start with this loop and then just keep feeding, feeding it more down. That way you get any kinks out of it. You don't want any kinks in it. You want to make sure it's nice and smooth all the way through. All the way through. All right, there we go. Now, as you can see, we went, this is a how much canthal we don't need. All of this right here. So it's about half. We used about half of it. So that's why I said I'm just gonna do a single coil on this one. And then, uh, you know, if you wanna do a dual coil, you just wrap more, that's all. So all right, so that's nice and tight together. Now the trick is, that's nice and tight on this side because you have something stopping. Over here, you basically just push with your fingers and wherever you see that bunch ended, right where that bunch has ended, just bend the canthal, just like that. Give it a nice little bend. Of course, it's not working for me, but you give it a nice little bend. Grab your pliers and crimp it down. Crimp it down right there. If it wants to crimp, it's like sliding. <laughs> Doesn't want to crimp. Come on, little buddy. There we go. There we go. Just crimp that down. That way it'll stop it from sliding. All right. Straighten that out a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip off that extra piece of canthal. I want to clip it off uh, below the crimp. So if you see right there, I'm just going to clip off the piece that doesn't have any wraps on it. 
just like that. So it still leaves a little crimp right there. And then what we're gonna do over here, you can either crimp, bend it, crimp it like like I showed you, because uh, this this uh, wire we wrapped around it might be a little springy. So uh, what you can do is just leave this here. That's usually what I do. I leave this right here. Leave this end crimped down, if you can see. Leave this end crimped down. And then what we're gonna do is just wrap it. So now that that's done, uh, that's about it. You know, we tightened it down. Let's look at it up close, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap a we'll wrap a coil. All right, there you go. Nice and smooth all the way through. Nice and smooth. All right, now let's wrap it. Let's wrap it on a, uh, let's go with 3 seconds drill bit. And go ahead and start with this side. Give yourself a little extra room. Start on the side with the little crimp. Give yourself a little extra room. So about an inch past that crimp. And uh, yeah, I mean, from that point on, if you have that, uh, you have the outer wire nice and tight, there should be no issues. You just wrap it down. Let's just do, uh, let's do like five wraps. Ah, forget it. Let's do let's do six wraps. All right. Now, as always. Make sure both sides are kind of heading down the same way, heading down the same path, so to speak. And then just get it nice, twist it tight, like you would with any coil. And then let's look at it up close. So there it is. There is your hand-wrapped Clapton. Hand-wrapped Clapton. Very nice. Let's see if we can get closer on it. There you go. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed it in there. Uh, and this should sit, I would say, probably about 0.3, maybe a little bit lower. It's just a single coil. Uh, I'm using the uh, t uh, the Mutation X version one, but I'm using the version two cap, so I have a single flow, single airflow option. So let's just go ahead and put them in. Uh, pick whatever one you want. Actually, I'm gonna flip that around. I should have wrapped it the other way. Oh well. Oh well. Yeah, so I should have wrapped that the other way. Kind of a kind of newbie of me, but whatever. So it's gonna look like that, but that's really not a problem. Uh, let's go ahead and just give it a little bit of lead room. So if you see like this, uh, just basically put it on the edge, right on the edge of the RDA, and then uh, screw that bad boy down. Put a put a uh, screwdriver back into it, and we'll adjust it where we need to adjust it. So uh, let's go ahead and screw this down. I got it where I want it, just about. Uh, it's a little high, uh, but that's all right because the airflow, I feel the airflow on the Mutation X version two cap is a little high anyways. So I do like to raise it up a little bit. So if we look straight down on it, that should clear, that'll clear the top cap. That's also something you want to think about. You don't want to ground out. You don't want to uh, short that out. So definitely make sure the, uh, the top cap clears when you're building larger coils like this. But let's go ahead and look at this bad boy up close. All right, there you go. So there is the, the Clapton coil, single Clapton coil, 22 gauge wrapped around, uh, using some 32 gauge to wrap that around. So that is that is what it is. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Uh, it's gonna have some hot spots. That's just how the Claptons work. You kind of have to wiggle them out. So let's clip these leads and then get those hot spots out and also see what it's firing at. Let's go with 47 watts on this, 0.3. All right, we have a few hot spots, but not too bad. Remember, just like just like the god of all building, twisted messes say, wiggle it. You know, put it in there, give it a wiggle. Definitely props to uh, twisted messes. Uh, kind of the idea of doing this by hand. I just saw him do his. Uh, I believe it was a parallel Clapton. 
and uh, that just kind of gave me the idea to, you know, see, let's do it by hand instead of doing it with a power drill. So there we go. It's lighting up nice and evenly. As you can see, it glows for a good while. Definitely glows for a good while. So you're going to get some warm vape out of that. But let's look at it super up close. All right, there it is. It's all wicked up, very simple. Just uh, get enough wick in there uh, to just barely touch the bottom of that deck just so it can absorb any juice that might, uh, you know, might be down in there. So I'm gonna just drip some juice on it and see how it fires. All right, I'm gonna pull it away a little bit just so I don't fog it up too much. Good news, everyone. The vapor's flowing again. Uh, just a few things definitely to mention before we vape on it. Uh, definitely take caution when you're building with this. Uh, definitely know what you're doing. Use a high drain, high amp battery, or if you're using a, you know, a regulated box mod like this, definitely be using good batteries and uh, just play it smart. Uh, definitely use caution when you're doing this. All right, you're back to face view. You can look at my beautiful face while we do this. So I have this set up in single coil mode. Uh, like I said, it's 0.3 ohms. I'm gonna run it at about, uh, I'm gonna say about 45 watts, only because I don't want it to be too warm. If you can hear, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of dealing with some uh, sinus problems. So let's go down. How low can you go? I always I always hold this Segeli too long. You know what I'm talking about? I hold it too long and then it'll jump down in watts or jump up in watts and I'm just like, no, stop it. Stop, I want it there. I wanted it to go, stop it. So that's about four volts, 45 watts, 0.3 ohms. And um, yes, let's go ahead and do it. Let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it, definitely. All right, it's shooting vapor. It's shooting vapor and so shall I. All right, I got it wide open. Let's vape on it. Ooh. Mighty tasty. I've actually, this is the first time trying this juice. It's called Fog's Brew, Tree of Life. Tree of Fog, not Tree of Life. And it's six milligrams, and it is, wow. It's actually pretty tasty. I actually picked this up at a Vape Summit. I was just filming people, and this guy just handed me a bottle. So if this was you, if you are somehow watching my, uh, watching my videos, thanks, because <laughs> it's good. It's good, good. I will send a bottle of free juice to anybody who can name that quote I just did. And I'm not going to say it again, but I quoted somebody. I'll send a bottle of free juice if anybody can name that quote. First person to do it, go. All right, let's vape on it one more time. One more time. This is delicious. This is delicious. It's definitely a fruity flavor, but uh, yeah, Clapton, definitely flavor for sure. I'm getting like a nicotine head rush. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. I feel like coughing right now <clears throat> because it's so intense. I'm kinda buzzed, kinda lightheaded, but who cares? All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, definitely this is the best way to do it if you don't have a, uh, a power drill. If this is something you want to do, definitely hit me up in the comments below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, if you found this helpful, if you just think I'm crazy and I should just use a, a power drill, go ahead and let me know that also. But I already know how to do it on a power drill. Uh, I just want to do it by hand just to see if I could do it. And uh, a few people have asked me how I do it. So uh, this video is really for those people. Uh, Jeff Smith, Samantha Sandy, um, a few other people have asked me. So I just thought I would do it. I had a little bit of free time, so I thought I would do it. 
Uh, so again, if you guys find this video helpful, uh, just shoot it a like. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if I'm dumb, definitely let me know in the comments below. Always love a good troll. I try not to feed them, but if I have to, I will. So that's going to wrap up this little tutorial build video going on. And uh, if you have any other questions, go ahead, as always, leave them in the comments below or email me at cloudy.vape at gmail.com. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please like it. And if you like my videos in general, please subscribe. And as always, stay classy and keep vaping.